Hey everyone, my name is Cole. Welcome to my One Car Garage workshop here in London, Ontario. Let's take a look and see what has changed for 2024. All right, let's just get this started with a little bit of an overview. If you have watched any of the other years I've done a shop tour, you'll see that things have largely mirrored this year. And uh, this isn't that much of a shared space anymore. So it is primarily a woodworking shop. However, there is still a lot of kind of kids toys, bikes, that sort of thing garbage cans that you'll see over here and some other things that I want to address in the shop. So let's get into some of the details, starting with this messy corner over here. And let's just zoom back in. So first and foremost, we have kind of the chemical cupboard with chemicals, oil, bug spray, all that kind of stuff. Got a little bit of storage for tarps and garbage bags over top. Then we just kind of have lots of kids toys mixed with some gasoline, of course. Got a nice little pancake air compressor. I would like to replace that with the California Air Tools just to make it a little quieter because I do use that quite a bit in the summer. And then just some miscellaneous garden stuff, some clamps that are kind of all over the place and a drill press that I don't use that often. Um, but when I do, it's there. So it's kind of out of the way. And uh, yeah, this is just kind of one of those junky corners. Then moving over, we have my saw stop compact and this table saw is fine. It's quite expensive for what it is, but you do kind of have that, that peace of mind from a safety perspective with it being saw stop. So if your fingers get caught in the blade, well, it's going to drop and protect you. We have a socket set and it's just really convenient to roll that cart. I can roll it right up to my DIY MFT, which we'll have more on in a few minutes and use it as an outfeed table with the table saw. So I do primarily use a track saw in my shop. So the table saw is generally meant for small parts or specific rips. We have a ladder, some more yard equipment, some clamp storage with a sign, and then my miter saw. Now this is the Makita LS1019, so it's a 10 inch sliding miter saw. The great thing is that it slides forward, so I can have it pretty close to the wall, which is awesome. The dust collection on it is pretty fair. Um, so I think probably among the best dust collection outside of moving towards the Festool Capex, which as a Festool fanboy, I'm sure I will make that move at some point but does kind of have a double shroud for collecting dust and uh, just really nice to be able to connect my dust extractor, which is by far my most used tool to the Makita miter saw. So just kind of talking about my most used tool, this is the Festool CT MIDI with the Cyclone on top. It is the MIDI Eye, so it's got Bluetooth built in and by far the most used tool in my shop. So what is in the cabinet underneath the miter saw? I'm glad you asked. So let's just move this out of the way. The top drawer is basically drilling accessories. So we've got some like cheapo drill bits mixed with some DeWalt brad points. I have recently picked up some of the Festool and Centrotech as I have moved towards Centrotech for the majority of my stuff. Got some long drill bits from Lee Valley, got Forstner bits, hole saw bits, and just a few other attachments as well as some driving accessories. The next drawer is, and this is kind of one of the overarching themes in my shop, is drawers are junky. So they might be themed, so this one is all for sanding, but sandpaper is kind of all over the place. Once I open a package, it just gets loose. I still have stacks of paper over here. So this is just something that just needs 10 minutes for me to, to organize um, effectively. Underneath, I have a few tools that I don't use quite as often. So I've got my 12 inch disc sander. I do really like this thing. It's an awesome sander. I did have the craft deck. So this is from busy bee tools here in Canada. I did have their spindle spindle sander as well. And I stored that under here. However, I got rid of that because the disc sander sander is what I use the most. Uh, I do have my DeWalt um, brad nailer got some, I think these are bandy clamps and kind of the accordion folder for all of the paperwork for the majority of my tools. And moving along, let's get a bit of a view of this wall. So that, um, first of all, that, that miter saw was over here uh, this time last year, but I did want to reorganize things quite significantly just to help with some better flow from the house and that sort of thing. So we do have lumber storage above this long and narrow um, tool storage and uh, drawer. So I primarily built this for the drawer and just to show you what's in there, this is why I built this. So I have my long parallel guides from TSO for my track saw, as well as UJK fence and um, the PERF guide system 
drilling guide. So this is just kind of where all my long parts get stored. So it's really nice to have this like 1300 millimeter drawer, although there is a bit of sag that you can see in the top. So it's not quite touching. So I, I can't really put anything on the middle of the top until I kind of strengthen that a little bit. Then underneath on the right, we do have some kind of small part storage. And this is gonna be one of the things I want to address this year, but I'm um, generally okay with, with how these ones are stored. So construction screws, miscellaneous screws, bolts, hardware, and nails, which you don't use nails too often anymore with a lot of what I do. Then we have some sustainer storage. So we have kind of my, my TID and uh, TPC box there, although those are now attached to my MFT for quicker access, which is awesome. We have my OF1010 router, easily the best router I've ever owned. Uh, it basically replaced my Bosch EBSPK as well as my DeWalt cordless. So, I mean, it's not as powerful as the Bosch, but it's such a great tool and um, it's just something that I, I get a complete pleasure out, out of using. So I do want to try the 1400 at some point to get a little bit more power, but the OF1010 is a great router from Festool. We have my ETS EC150, uh, awesome six inch or 150 millimeter sander, super powerful. We have the um, dust accessory kit with 36 millimeter hose from Festool. Then just above this, we have some paper towel storage. Um, I did buy this T-Track with the intentions of embedding it in my DIY MFT, which I do have a, a whole build series on the DIY MFT seven part series and also a part that came out last week on this brand new bench dogs fence. So the T-Track was going to be used instead of this fence, but uh, based on your recommendations, I went for the bench dogs and absolutely love it. We have some battery storage and this wasn't added that long ago. I had to put a little bit of a video together. Just nice to have the batteries out of a drawer. And moving along, we have a door to the outside that's hopefully getting replaced sooner than later. And then we end up with a little bit of a junky corner and a lot more small part storage and junk storage. Uh, just like any shop is gonna collect this kind of stuff, but small parts are just kind of all over the place. I've got bolts and screws and washers and all that kind of stuff just all over the place and all these. I might have to open up 20 of these drawers to find what I want. So this is something that I do want to address uh, at some point this year. I think I've been saying that for a few years now. And I think that this whole feature wall is something that I want to address this year. So I've been talking to my wife about some plans and I am thinking about putting some like exterior wood siding up here. I know uh, Mark Spagnuolo, the Wood Whisperer used T111 on a lot of things. So I'm kind of thinking about that just to clean this up get things a little more organized. I did just recently get this 50 inch TV, which is great for watching the Jays games in the summer. But um, yeah, if you have any ideas kind of on how I can make this a little bit more of a feature wall, something that I could have in the background of videos from time to time, uh, I'm all ears. So, so definitely let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments below. Then we have this big cabinet that I built uh, quite a few years ago and um, just absolutely love it. Great storage. So I've got some sustainer storage underneath. So CXS12, I didn't like that when I first used it. I thought it was far too loud. I still think it's too loud, but it is such a great little drill driver. My TSC 55K track saw. Then other sustainers. So I've got some small cabinet hardware in this guy. I think this one is my DeWalt jigsaw and DeWalt oscillating tool. This one is my pin nailer and um, some other air compressor accessories. This one is my Craig 720 Pro jig and uh, some of its accessories. As far as the drawers, actually before we get to the drawers, let's just take a look at the top. So right now it's pretty tidy, not usually this tidy. Stack of paper and manuals and that kind of stuff to deal with. And in this top drawer, kind of junk, um, but just kind of that, that small accessory stuff that you need. Here's a, a drunk bin, here's another junk bin. But um, yeah, just kind of some of those workshop accessories that you need from time to time. Okay, so now let's take a look at what's in all of these drawers and you'll find that just like the other ones we looked at, just kind of a whole mess of stuff. So in this one, it's kind of a mix of measuring and marking as well as kind of hand tools. I did recently pick up a whole bunch of Nipix. Um, got a mallet in here. So just a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I'm definitely looking for advice on how you think I should organize this. I have been thinking about getting Kaizen foam and doing that to all of the drawers right here, all the shallow drawers that is, and just kind of having everything laid out perfectly so I know exactly where it goes back, getting rid of all these cases and just having all these parts in Kaizen foam. 
Um, just because it's not, I know that everything is in here, but it's just always a pain going in and grabbing them. It is causing a little bit of sag in the drawer, whereas Kaizen foam, I think, will bring a, bring a little bit of rigidity to it. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. And second drawer. Uh, so we've got a lot of Craig accessories, <laughs> screw boxes that are just kind of all open and all over the place. I use uh, quite a bit of these when, uh, again, cabinetry is kind of one of the, my main things that I like doing at home. So I do use quite a bit of that. We do have some corner clamps here, some saws, but again, could really just kind of benefit from having that, that Kaizen foam in here. I think a lot of these um, Craig screws and accessories could, could either go into a sustainer or into to something else from a storage perspective. Third drawer. This one is pretty organized. So this is kind of my MFT accessory. So a lot of my 20, 20 millimeter accessories over here, router bit. So I do need some better router bit storage. So I'm not going in and grabbing the whole thing and trying to find the router bit that I want. Um, and then also uh, all my other router accessories. So I do have a lot of these um, CRB7 accessories from Empower that I've used the base a handful of times. I've had the intentions of doing a review on the entire system. I haven't used all of them. I did buy some of the parts on significant discount uh, when a store was going out nearby. So leave me know in the comments below if you think that's worth it. It is definitely one of the most universal and um, just best bases that you can get for a router. So moving down, another drawer that is kind of junky. Uh, reciprocating saw, we've got some chalk line stuff. We've got nips, we've got my good uh, chisels in here. We've got some nails. So again, just kind of all over the place. So I think like these four drawers really could benefit from that, that Kaizen foam. So again, let me know in the comments below what you think uh, as far as I could do with that. And the bottom drawer is kind of like a bigger junk drawer. So no Kaizen foam going in here, but this is kind of a lot of the, the bigger stuff. So we've got um, like torque wrench, grinders, um, yeah, this isn't meant to be like a complete uh, tool list or video on all my tools, but yeah. So this thing is pretty full. So I am thinking about moving it out a couple of inches, strapping the wall and doing something bigger over there. Over here, we do have some entrance into the house. Uh, my tracks for my track saw, 14 mil 1400 millimeter tracks are all in that Lee Valley bag. Got some saw horses, recycling. Then we've got a bit of a tool wall over here. Now we have been having a little bit of water issues up uh, alongside the chimney where water will come in along here, but we are getting it reflashed in a couple of weeks. And this tool wall, it's okay. Um, I think that some of this stuff could go in drawers if I did the Kaizen stuff. And I think some of the other stuff could go along here if I did kind of a, a, that feature wall. Um, so I think that'll change up uh, over the coming months. I do really like these clamps. I think these are just like rebadged clamps from Bessie by Festool. Super easy to use in the MFT. There, one-handed operation, not so great. Uh, collection of shoes, that's about half of them as a runner. Uh, people that say running is a cheap sport, um, haven't done it before and bought shoes when they're supposed to. <laughs> uh, some more sustainers. So we've got the ETS-125 the Festool Domino and the Domino Accessory. Loving the Domino, I've been playing around with it a lot, haven't built any projects with it, but can't wait to do a little more. And something that I am thinking about building, or not thinking, I'm gonna go get the lumber tomorrow, is I, I'm gonna be building a smaller MFT that is gonna be on wheels, just like the big one, but with more intention of moving it around. So it's gonna have some sustainer storage underneath. It's gonna have the perforated top um, for MFT type stuff. And I'm gonna primarily be using that with the Domino. And I also have a laser cutter coming in a couple of weeks that needs a place to live. So um, yeah, <laughs> definitely need that. Now we have the DIY MFT. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have a seven part series on the build of this. No build plans, unfortunately, but this continues to evolve and just be the absolute centerpiece of my shop. I love this. It's got a ton of weight under it with all of this lumber. More will be added soon and it just rolls around perfectly. I can roll it out on the driveway if I want to be working on a nice day. I added a lot of these accessories to the outside, which I outlined in my most recent video on that. Just nice to have everything at kind of at my fingertips and some of the, the accessories that I love using. I just wanted to set this up just to show you. So these UJK fences, while the bench dogs does replace my large fence, 
Um, these UJK ones are still great and versatile for so many things, as are these Festool clamping elements. And more often than not, this is how I have the table set up. So right now, I have the short 800 millimeter rail on here. I do have the 1400 millimeter rails when I am doing thicker stuff or wider stuff, and I can um, take these UJK clips and dogs and align them for uh, quite wide rips. And uh, yeah, so I, as I mentioned last week, um, I did put out a video on this Bench Dogs um, Mark II fence. It is amazing. It's got these great little flip stops that just work absolutely perfectly. Having multiples on there is gonna allow me to work more efficiently uh, with some of my bigger projects and that sort of thing. So without further ado, oh, one more thing uh, with the MFT I did is I uh, had these pipe clamps just kind of hanging around all over the place. So I found, finally found a place to store them. And just to show you kind of the side view, they are out of the way so I could walk around this uh, without issue. This lumber cart, um, I think it's gonna go uh, just with me building the smaller MFT on wheels. Most of that lumber, that scrap can be put underneath the MFT and some of it's just gonna go in the shed in the backyard. I think I'm gonna start leaning on the, on the shed for some of my lumber storage because there's some scraps here that I just won't use for years. Like I, when am I gonna use eighth inch uh, or quarter inch thick um, seed or uh, not cedar, um, cherry plywood? Probably not anytime soon. So I think that I can definitely put a lot of that stuff in the shed and uh, get it out of the way and have a little bit more room in here. So same with the garbage bins. They're gonna be going into something I'm building for the outside. And then that becomes bike storage for our family bikes. I've got a shop vac, four foot ladder, and then more storage over here. So it's a lumber rack, but it's mostly kind of like just for some household storage. So yeah, there's some lumber up there, but I think that this is car cleaning accessories, um, dust collection accessories. We've got our leaf bags, grass seed, and all that sort of thing. So this shop really is kind of while it is primarily a woodworking shop, it is still a shared space, just less shared uh, these days. Now, what do I have in mind for what I want to change? So I think that I mentioned kind of that, that feature wall down at that end, some improved small part storage, um, that, that DIY MFT cart uh, to have a little bit of sustainer storage underneath it as well. The bigger thing is the electrical in here. So this is a shared circuit with uh, one of the rooms inside. So, so many things are run off extension cords and when I have my heater, my little heater up there on, and then I turn on the vacuum, well, the breaker flips and I have to go in and address that. So, the electrical has been on the list for a few years. It's, it's gonna be, um, it's, it shouldn't be too, too costly, but just one of those things that's gonna take a lot of work and require a lot of things moving around. The main panel is just under, or just inside and under um, on the basement. So I should be able to run a sub panel and have that up here. So that's one of the goals. And uh, other things uh, as far as major stuff that I want to do. So yeah, fixing the water damage, um, heating and cooling. So this place does get really cold in the winter. It's basically unusable in January and February. So I have this heater that can get it up to a few degrees above zero, but it's not pleasant working in here in January, or February. So I kind of take those months off. And in the summer here in Southern Ontario, it gets hot and humid. Uh, so that definitely kind of causes a, a bit of chaos in here as it becomes a little unpleasant to work uh, with the humidity and it can also wreak havoc on some of the tools from a rust perspective. And what else do we have? I think that that's about it. So just showing you, um, I got some storage up top, which is nice. So I'll probably insulate up there uh, at some point, but the lighting in here, oh, that's a, something I just thought of. The lighting is something that I, well, I'm, I want to say invested, but maybe it was $100 for these four LED lights. And I did that seven or eight years ago and they have held up amazingly well. Um, sometimes I think I could use a fifth, then I don't buy it for a year and I don't feel like I need to. So these are just kind of all wired up to a, a just a little switch uh, up there. So really easy for me to just come in, press a button, wirelessly turns that on. And then I have all of these lights. So. There you have it. This is my one car garage shop, um, 20 by 12 feet. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you think that this is pretty well laid out or if you have any ideas on how I can improve this, um, yeah, please let me know. And thanks for watching and I'll have more videos out soon and be sure to check those that are already out. Thanks for watching.